Hello, this is How Could It Been, and today we are going to be reading some very spooky paranormal stories. I have so many tabs open, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Need help identifying what chased me. Trigger warning. Brief talk of suicidal thoughts. For some background, I, 13F, have been able to see spirits my whole life. Unfortunately, this has drawn malicious entities to me and my a family. And it's angered them whenever they haven't been able to mess with me mentally because they know I can see them. Which has caused me to be physically harmed by them in the past. But that is not what this puzzle is about. Not only that, but my family lives in an area which used to be a World War II camp, where the soldiers got ended in a blitz, and before that, it used to be an ancient burial site. So that does contribute to more than regular malicious activity. Tonight, about 11pm, I had a meltdown I ran out into the street, incredibly angered, constantly going into the road. But I heard something calling my name. It was a male voice, but it was very warped and obviously not human. I then turned around and ran, to which I heard whatever the being was chasing after me. When I eventually thought I lost the thing, I stopped for a couple of minutes to regain my breath. I started hearing what sounded like a cat meowing. However, there were no cats at all where I was. When I started to run again, I heard something chasing behind. When I stopped a third time to regain my breath, I was able to stop in a very shadowy area. And I heard what can only be described as the noise security cameras make when they turn or hissing directly behind me, very loudly. I ran again, and at this time I saw what looked like a completely black hand moving across the road directly in front of me. I very luckily got back home safe, however I have no clue what the thing was, and I'd like to know if anyone has any idea of what it could have been, as I'd like to know. From what I can tell, I was attracted to the fact that I was very strongly upset and angry. I have PDA autism, which causes my emotions to be more intense than a non-autistic person's. It was uh, able to make voices and sounds, and could detach parts of its body. Can I help up identify what's chasing me tonight, and what I should do about it? Looking for a dragon to help me with my daughter. About a year ago, I asked for help from or my daughter who is possibly going through demonic oppression. Maybe even possession. I don't know where to look for help, but found someone named the dragon who is willing to help her. She never will talk to him or follow uh, uh, through, but now it's way, way worse. And I'm desperately trying to find some... Tr and I'm desperate to try to find him or find help of my, for my daughter. Skinwalker Sighting on a Summer Night I was standing with my older brother, both of us making cigarettes outside on my, my parents' porch. My family and I grew up in a very superstitious part of the American Southwest. I guess you could say in a part of America where all there is a strong fear of skinwalkers. I know, another skinwalker story, but what I witnessed alongside my brother felt chillingly real. A few years before this incident, my older brother and I encountered something in our back in our parents' backyard. So we've always been a bit on edge at night, and our neighborhood still um, to this day. That I don't grow up in a culture that discourages people from running, from wandering around at night without some sort of cultural blessing. But we were a few years older, smoking our cigarettes, catching up because my brother was attending in college in the city. And now I was finishing up my junior year in high school. I was reveling on about something when my brother or startled, when my brother startled look at, out at our neighbor's yard. I looked over at what he was staring at and found myself looking at a shadow oh creature standing 
outside our neighbor's house. And it's hard to describe the shadow as its figure was basically blacker than the night outside the dim glow of the street lights, having almost shadow radiance if that makes any sense. It was standing on the side of our neighbor's house, and while I couldn't see its face, I knew it was staring at our neighbor's straight windows. My brother and I looked at each other with disbelief. We'd both heard, heard the stories about skinwalkers roaming around at night, and we both witnessed that sort of thing years ago, but it was only a glimpse followed by hearing the most utterworldly, horrifying howl that that sound both human and animal, but this was different. It was like seeing something we were never meant to see, something even more sinister. We said nothing to each other, turning our gaze back towards it's a figure which was still staring at, our, at the neighbor's window. After what seemed like a long moment, the figure started to slowly turn and walk to our neighbor's backyard. The way it moved was a surreal sight. It looked to be moving both slow and fast at the same time. Like jogging in place, except it was gliding along. They moved towards a group of neighborhood dogs. And I knew that these were neighborhood dogs because I recognized almost every one of them underneath them and tangerine the backyard light. But they weren't scared by this shadow figure. In fact, they looked to be welcoming it. Dogs formed a crowd around the figure, or which stopped. I started to stay, morphed down onto all fours, and sprang a black tail, and disappeared into the night with the group of neighboring of neighborhood dogs following. I looked at my brother and asked, "What did you put into these cigarettes?" We both nervously chuckled, but we knew what we saw and hurried back inside, making sure we took our cigarette butts with us. Inside, our dad and youngest brother were asleep, but our mom was still up. We told our mom what happened, and she instructed us to go outside to get some wood to burn. She smeared ash on our foreheads, and we ventured outside to gather some firewood. While walking towards the wood pile, we noticed our street light, which was on when we were heading back inside. I was having got our cigarettes, was out. The only street light I'd out in the entire neighborhood. We saw it as a sign of something being around, and hurried to gather the woods. Right when we were about to head inside, we could smell it. The strong, putrid scent of a dead animal. We knew right, right there and then that we were in the middle of all of those stories we'd heard, heard about skinwalkers. We didn't stop to take a look around. Instead, we made haste back into our house and built a fire. We told our mom what we smelled outside, and she marched outside with a fresh tin of ash to confront whatever was out there. She yelled in English and in her native language to leave us a freak alone, we never did anything to you, and command for it to leave by the traditional ways and the way of Jesus Christ. She sprinkled ash outside our front under the back porch and anchored a bow and arrow above the door leading out towards the back porch. We saw that at night without any more incidents. Months later, when I moved to the city to live with my older brother and work for the summer, I got a call from our mom. She told me that the neighbor who lived in the house that the sugar figure was outside of died of cancer. Whatever we saw that night chills me to this day. Oops, that didn't do the right thing. See no faces when driving. The other day, I was driving to meet up, up with a friend at to the casino an hour away. During this time, I was on the highway about to take the exit. Looked over and saw a man driving with a blurry face. There was a double take and saw the same thing with the patches in their car when I let them pass. Was a little freaked out since things like this never happened to me. Has everyone else experienced this just going about their day? Huh. Ghouls and energetic faces and figures. Anyone else plagued by ghouls but know they must be a projection of the mind because they are seen with eyelids shut also? They appear as white or purplish energy shaped heads and faces and bodies, which move up and down and also glide around a room of their own accord. I've always blamed my psychosis, so I was wondering if anyone else suffered from similar.
Hmm. Seems like nobody else really saw your post, Sophie. <sighs> Sleeping Beauty Curse? Hello everyone, so I've been reading some posts from here and finally saw guys like myself and thinking what's going on with me is not uh, real. So, when I was a kid, I stayed with my aunt and my grandmother a lot. Oops. They were poor and lived in a small house, but I loved it. It went more snuggles with my grand and, my, uh, and aunt and warmer winter nights. My grandma was the best, loving, caring, kind, basically a great grandma. My aunt was a little off. Not completely, but you knew there was something there. Like a single petal on a flower rotting away. All the other petals are fine. Mind you, I was five to six, so it was a long time ago. I was talking with my aunt, but she was sewing. It was her hobby. Now I think about it, I never remember what she stitched up. Hmm. Anyway, she left the table for some reason or another, and I, being obnoxiously curious, grabbed the fabric she was embroidering. Then she saw me from the door and yelled like crazy. She took it from me and yelled at me not touch it because I could ruin it. She slapped my hand, and in the process of me trying to escape, I picked myself up on my I finger and bled on the fabric a little. She slapped my hands again and told me to go patch herself up in the, in the bathroom. It was just a prick? But I remember having this that scar for years. It's only recently I remembered it. But the weird thing about it was it hurt every time my aunt was around. Mind you, I didn't hate her or anything, but even before I knew she was coming, my my boo boo started to hurt. I think when I was fifteen in this period my finger kept hurting when I was around her. She passed away a few years ago and my finger never hurt when I was at her funeral. Rumors around her practice of black magic swirled around town. We live in a small town, and I didn't think, think, think much of it because I thought that was what small town folk do. They go stories for fun, but I never or ever paid any mind to it. So the reason we're all here is because a year ago, I was touching up my friend's dress for a party, and I pricked my finger accidentally. Now the scar is there again. It's been a year, and it's still there. We went to the cemetery a few weeks ago and passed my aunt's, and I thought about it. it it but the entire oh wait, right there, my finger started hurting, and when we got to the cemetery, it felt sore as heck. But after we left, I was good. So, am I going insane, or... Hmm. Visits by Deceased Furry Friends Hello all, I'd like to hear true personal stories about in which it seems a pet may have returned after their death for a final visit. Not a pet cemetery away, preferably, for moving on to whatever comes next for them. And yes, this legitimately happened to me and my wife. This is legitimately happened to my wife and I on more than in one occasion. Like some of you, I'm all too familiar with the grief that comes with the loss. I think it would be nice to hear from others with similar experiences who perhaps felt comforted, comforted in knowing their, their beloved fur babies may indeed have moved on to other things. I'll share one, with, one of my stories below, and this absolutely happened just as I've written. <sighs> Ghost Kitties A few years back, we had a couple of really great adopted cats. One of them... Porsche was a beautiful female, very petite, very loving and very smart, with an incredibly long tail, absurdly long whiskers, and exotic golden eyes. She even had her, her own sense of humor and was one of those animals who could read her expressions and body language, and perhaps her mind, it sometimes seemed. She has a special bond with my wife in particular. At evenings, usually found Porsche sleeping cuddled safely and warmly with my, my wife. Porsche would often walk past and show her back to my rear and her tail around under her leg, letting it unwind and slide past as she continued on. We had her for quite a few years while she was still a young cat. One lazy, peaceful Sunday morning, 
Forge abruptly began crying in pain and panic and could not move her back half. We were grateful to find a vet that was open and were clearly informed that Forge had something called a saddlebag thrombrosis, a clot in the main vessel that supplies blood to the rear quarters, which were dying of oxygen deprivation even as we spoke. Short of immediate at risky and ex very expensive sur surgery, she would have to be put to sleep. So very much in shock and having little money, we made the hard choice. I don't cry easily, but tears rolled for, both, for us both as we patted her soft, still head goodbye and left for a sadder, emptier home. A couple days later, I was in the shower. As I stepped out and began telling myself off, I felt the towel wrap itself around my leg briefly and continue on. I was so accustomed to the sensation that for a moment, I thought nothing of it, until I remembered, of course, that the cat so often responsible for it was gone. Not to mention the fact that I was alone in the bathroom. It was a unique and strangely comforting moment, to say the least. To add another interesting moment to the story, I'll first back up a bit. Horch always had long nails, and the sound of her walking on top of her poor girl flooring was very distinct. She may not have weighed much, but you could usually hear her coming anyway. Click, 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 click. Hey, that reminds me of that click shot video. Remember when I made that? Quite often, this was heard in the gap between the back of our couch and the wall, one of Porsche's preferred routes, namely to avoid our dog. One night, not long after we lost Porsche, my wife was watching TV from the couch. So she heard that same click click she had heard so many times before, and it was coming from behind the couch. After that, we never felt or heard anything from her again. <sighs> Accidentally invited ghosts in my bedroom. It was a little after 5.30 a.m. when I heard three light knocks on my bedroom door. Assuming it to be my three-year-old, I called out, Come in! Four more louder knocks. knocks followed. Assuming the door was locked, it was. I got up and opened it, telling her to come in again, which she didn't. I called out her name twice. Then stepped out into the hall and fell around for her. Confused and so sleepy, when I realized she wasn't there, I went back in my room to get my, my bed for, to get my phone for a flashlight. In case she stuck in, Ed saw the baby monitor. She was right out on her bed asleep, and any hint of being being tired left. I used my phone's flashlight to check the hallway, guest room, and stairs. The dog was asleep at the bottom of the stairs, and all my other kids were in bed. What the heck? Did I just invite this ghost into my room? Let's wait for this to load. Okay. Anyone else ever see dark floating hair at night? Once a month or so, as I'm starting to fall asleep sometimes, I wake up and see a clump of hair floating in the room. Sometimes it's close enough to touch. When I try it, it when I try, it just sort of dissolves. One time, it sort of crawled into the smoke detector and disappeared. Closest thing in the movie would be the floating hair in the garage, but this is way smaller. One time the shape was almost like that blue floating thing in an avatar. Other times it's more squiggly. Anyone else ever see this thing? I figure I'm just dreaming or hallucinating on top of reality. I 100% know I'm awake, but I don't understand why it's always hair and if anyone else gets that. 
No one else responded. Very sad. Ghost smoking in my car? Okay, help me out here. I feel like a crazy person. I saw a new job three weeks or so ago. I recognize that hotel as an auditor. I have cameras on everything you can watch, not only my car, but the lobby and hallways. Here's my issue. My car has begun to sink like cigarettes when I'm driving home. I have windows open as I drive to air it out, but when my husband uses the car in the morning, he finds ashes as well. All that tells me the car smells so branded, it's as if some on one tr and smoked a pack of cheap cigarettes with the windows up. I quit smoking 10 years ago. He did as well. Neither of us smoke anymore, nor do we have any friends who smoke. My car windows are still up while I'm at work, and he too keeps the windows up while at his job. Corrections officer at a prison. We have argued over this recently, thinking the other has gone back to smoking and found another and I of us Azar and have no evidence of purchase. I'm at this point where or I feel like the only thing left is my car is haunted. It's disgusting. My car stinks and I find that every day there's ashes on the dashboard. Please, someone, give me eat some help. I just feel insane. <sighs> recent encounter. I mean, I assume these are somewhat recent. So this happened less than an hour ago, and I was wondering if anyone could help. Me and my best friend went to my mom's house to turn off her AC and check up on the uh, cat since they're since they're away for the night. We checked the house over or turned off the AC and we're having a good chat with, when my friend noticed the cat needed water, so he went to refill the bowl. Which replaced the bowl she thought she saw the cat near there near her legs by the bowl. When she looked over the cat was sitting by the kitchen where I was. I could see my friend but I could see the cat sitting there looking and where my friend was standing. I found it odd since always the cat follows anyone who has a water dish. Same with the food bowl. So it was norm abnormal that the cat just watched. Just afterwards, we met up outside the kitchen in her door, and we both heard a whisper in our ears, followed by the under by the underselling feeling a nausea. We both felt hot instantly. The whisper of a woman's voice we couldn't make out. The words, but three or four were said. Overall, we we're, were both looked by it. Note, no one was in the house but us and the cat. All I saw for tags were NSFW, but should be labeled as encounter, probably. You don't say. And that's the last story we have for today. Oh dear. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no clue what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, but I hope it isn't quite as terrifying. Until then, goodbye!